Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department, Frostburg State University. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about polymers made by radical polymerization. I covered the radical polymerization mechanism in a previous video using ethene as an example. In this video, we're going to talk about polymers that are substituted ethenes, or basically other alkenes, and talk about the regioselectivity of polymerization. So I'll do a little bit of the mechanism in this video, but not as much as I've done in that previous video. Mostly we're going to talk about uh, the relationship between monomer structure and polymer structure. I'm going to start with um, the second simplest of all alkenes, propene. And like ethene, and generally a lot of alkenes, if you submit this alkene to radical conditions with no other reagents, just an, just an initiator, you are eventually going to get a polymer produced. And you're going to get a long growing chain. And it's the alkene carbons that end up in the chain, and the methyl group here is going to end up uh, as a side chain. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the outcome. I'm going to draw several repeat units. And the methyl groups actually alternate carbon atoms. And the reason for this is because when we do a radical addition reaction, the radical forms on the more substituted pattern, and, well, I'm sorry, the more substituted carbon atom, and the the more substituted carbon atom, and the group that is being added across, added to the, um, sorry, that's being added to the pi bond ends up on the less substituted carbon atom. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to draw a little bit of this mechanism, but not a whole lot of the mechanism, just the, the first, a little bit. Right? The first addition of the initial radical left over from the, left over from the initiator happens so that the radical that forms, forms at the more substituted position. We get this new intermediate radical. And then in the next propagation step, this radical reacts with another molecule of monomer. And it's going to add that second molecule of monomer in the exact same way so that we again generate a radical at the more substituted position. And that leaves the methyl group from the original propene at the second position, the radicals at the fourth position along the chain, and it continues in that fashion. So I'll do one more propagation step just to show you how this pattern is finally established. have our third monomer. And again, the addition of the monomer to the to growing polymer chain always occurs in such a way that the new radical forms on the more substituted position from the former monomer. And so always, we're always going to end up with this side chain on alternating positions based on the structure of the monomer. And I, you know, I drew several repeat units, but also remember that with polymer structure, it's perfectly okay to just draw one repeat unit in parentheses and then use the little subscript N to represent that this repeat unit happens multiple times.
Okay, so this is how it happens mechanistically. Let's just look at a couple of examples. For example, here is a monomer acrylonitrile, this monomer. If we were to ask ourselves, what polymer forms from the reaction of acrylonitrile with a radical initiator? The first part we need to remember is that only the alkene carbons end up in the polymer chain. So if we want to draw out the polymer chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we'll do 10. The, the initiator is at one end of that chain, so if you want to draw that, if you want to put the, the initiator as present on one end of the chain, do it. And the initiator attacks, uh, attaches at the less substituted end, so the nitrile side chain is the next carbon atom over. And then the radical that forms here attaches to the less substituted end of the next monomer. And so the substitution along the polymer chain happens every other position. And whatever functional group, whatever group is attached to the monomer at that position is attached to the polymer every other position. And again, we can draw this in a more uh, condensed format showing just a single repeat unit with the parentheses indicating repeating and with the subscript of N to let us know that this happens a large number of times. Let's pick um, a different monomer. Here is a monomer that has two chlorine atoms both at this position. Well, what happens here? What happens here, again, we have our initiator, and it attaches to the less substituted position on the alkene. And that more substituted position, where the two chlorine atoms are, is where the next radical forms. And then that adds another equivalent of monomer, always attaching first at the less substituted position, and always adding in alternating order so that we have the following polymer where we have our chlorine atoms on one carbon and the other carbon atom in the polymer chain has two hydrogen atoms on it. Now, the, the world of polymers can get much more complicated as the monomers get more complicated. There are also is a whole world of copolymers that can be made from combinations of different monomers, and, and it can get much more complicated. But in terms of, of identifying uh, the structure of polymers from a single monomer, it should be pretty straightforward. There is an alternating pattern to the substitution along the polymer chain. And that allows us to look at the structure of a polymer as it's drawn. So here I've drawn this one. I've stretched it out a little bit because it, it was going to get crowded. And we can identify the structure of the monomer that this polymer was synthesized from. And before I do that, I want to just redraw only one repeat unit. I have a, I have a reason for this. Put my ester functional group here, okay. the other methyl group here. Because what I also want to do is on the other carbon, other position in the repeat unit, I wanted to draw in the hydrogen atoms that are on that uh, other position. And basically everything that's between the two parentheses is in the structure of the alkene monomer. So I'm going to put a big thick line here. That heavy line is where the alkene is in the monomer. And so all we have to do is redraw this. Move this over. Ooh, that is not 
move it over here. Redraw this repeat unit, but instead of the the single bond, oh, something is wrong here. I apologize. Wonky geometry going on there. But instead of the single bond, we have a double bond between those two carbon atoms. And everything else that's in the structure of this monomer, or of this repeat unit, is here. Right? What's missing are the covalent bonds to the next monomer in the next repeat units, but they form in the radical reaction. This is the alkene uh, from which they form. Redraw this molecule a little bit simpler. And it turns out that this monomer is methyl methacrylate, which is a, a fairly common monomer to use to make a couple of different types of plastic. Um, I hope from this video you've gotten uh, a little bit about understanding the regioselectivity of polymer formation, the ability to draw the structure of a polymer given the structure of a monomer, and the ability to identify the structure of a monomer given the structure of a polymer. Thank you for watching.